Good morning. Our praises go to our Heavenly Father, Jesus the Christ, Lord our Savior. How blessed we are yet again to see another day that was not promised to us. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in this day. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we can give God praise for right now. I'm excited again for another worship experience. And thank God for the privilege of life. Thank God for strength and health. Thank God that we're in our right minds. We have so much to be thankful for on this morning. God is good. God is worthy to be praised. Whatever you're going through at home, whatever you're going through in your life, don't get down in your spirits. But remember, God is a God that's able to do above all what we ask or what we think. Trust in Him. Lean not to your own understanding. And He will direct your path. Is there any Jesus friends out there today in Facebook land? God is good. God is worthy to be praised. We're glad to be at this worship experience. We thank you this morning for tuning in with us via Facebook Live. We thank God for these who are here with us on this morning. We want you to know First Baptist, we're excited about another day's journey. We're glad about it. We want you to know we miss you and we long for another chance to worship together. But since this is what God has ordained, we're going to go ahead and do the best we can for God. And we're still going to give him praise and glory but he deserves our praise. The Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Sister Azra now is going to come and lead us in our praise and worship wherever you are at home. Stand with us, clap with us, sing with us, and let's give God some praise together.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads as we go to the throne of grace? Talk to God on this morning. Give God God hears our prayers. Would you bow? Most gracious and wonderful Father. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The majestic one. Father, humbly we approach the throne of grace. Lord, yes. With hearts filled with thanksgiving, Master. Thanking you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Father. Father, we thank you for those angels, grace and mercy. Father, we love you and we just say thank you. Father, thank you for last night's lying down. Father, oh, yeah. Touching us with the fingertip of love this morning to wake us up. Father. Yes, Lord. Just to see another day that we were not promised. So right now, Father, we just pause to say thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you, Father, for the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Father, we know that we have not been what we should be. Father, but we thank you that we're not what we could be. So right now, Father, we pause just to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed on Calvary. For we know, Father, that there is reconciliation. We know that there is justification and sanctification, glorification, Father. So right now, Father, we just pause to say thank you. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Father, we just ask, Father, that you just heal this nation. Father, we just ask that you just touch this nation. Touch. Father, we just ask, Father, that this COVID-19, Father, will not be what we see continuously, Father. We just ask that you just touch, if this be thy will. Father, we ask that you just be with those on the front line, those doctors, those oh, nurses. Those policemen, those paramedics, Father, we just ask that you just put a protective hedge around them, Father. Bless the scientists, Father, so that they can find a vaccine or a cure, Father. We just ask that you just be with us, Father, right now. Father, we hear rumors of tornadoes, Father. We just ask that you just be with us right now. Father, we just need to reach out and touch the hem of your garment. Father, please, sir, have mercy upon us. Father, we lift up First Baptist Church, Father. Thank you. We ask, Father, that you just continue to be with us. Lead us and guide us, Father, as we may be separated physically, Father, but we are knitted spiritually. So we just ask, Father, that you just be with us, Father. Bless those that are under the sound of my voice. Touch them. Just as they differ in name, Father, they differ in need. Father, we just come laying all these different, these, these, these issues, these burdens, Father, we just lay them at your feet, Father, and just ask that you just touch. Father, you said ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Father, we just knock right now, Father, asking you to seek your face or see your face, Father. Touch. Father, we just need you right now. Touch. Right now. It's not my mother. It's not my father. And it's not my brother, Father, but it's me Thank right you. now, Father, standing in the need of prayer. So we just ask that you just touch, Father. Father, we ask that you just be with those, Father, who have been stricken by this virus. We ask that you just touch their family, Father. Be with them, Father, in their time of need. Father, just ask that you just reach out or that you have them reach out and just touch the hem of your garment. Father, we ask that you just be with those, Father, on yesterday they had a job. Father, now they find themselves in the unemployment line. Father, we just ask that you just let them touch the hem of your garment. We ask that you be with that one, Father, that, that, that is asking for food right now. Yesterday they had food in their closet. Lord, help. Yesterday they had food in the refrigerator. But now they find themselves in the food line. Father, we just ask that you just let them touch the hem of your garment. Father, we need you. Father, we just ask that you just be with us in this time of darkness. Yes, Lord. Father, be the light in this time of darkness. Father, we thank you for allowing us to see you in this darkness. Father, thank you for revealing yourself in your word. We need you, Father. We just seek you right now, Father. Father, we ask that you just be with our sick and our shut. We ask that you be with the one that is bodies that is stricken with pain. Mentally and physically, Father, we just ask that you touch. Let them touch the hem of your garment. Be with that one that may be read in this hour, Father. We just ask that you just strengthen them. Give them the strength that surpasses all understanding, Father. Let them touch the hem of your garment. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask that you just be with our pastor today Lord, as he preached. Father, continue to crown his head with wisdom. Give him preaching power, Father. Let him feed us matter from heaven. Speak to us as you speak through us, Father. Father, we just ask that you just be with them, Father. Father, we just thank you for the gifts that you gave us, Father, today. Thank you for a church that continually to be spiritually and financially responsible. Father, we just ask and thank you for the gift that was given today. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the givers. Thank you for those that had it in their mind to give, Father, but lacked the substance, Father. So we just said thank you. Thank you. Father, we love you. 
Father, we adore you. And we pray this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Lord, for your prayer. Ash is going to come now with another praise and worship selection. You sing along with us wherever you are. We can hear you. Amen.
that you would just bow your head and just put a word in prayer. Father, we thank you now.
that God has a phone number. There is no area code, no seven digit number. In fact, the moment, the moment you start talking to him, God picks up and start listening to you. And the good news of the gospel this morning is that the God we serve will not forward you over to voicemail. Nor will he ignore your call or even look at the call ID and ignore your phone call. In fact, the only reason you may be dealing with an unanswered prayer is because you have not made the call. Do I have a witness? Is there anybody here today that believes that God is still answering prayer? Do I have a witness? If my people who are called by my name should just humble themselves and pray. The Bible says that man ought to always pray, that we ought to pray and not faint. God is still answering prayer. God has placed a phone down in our bosom where whenever we need to call him, we can call him and tell him what we want. In this text that we have before us, Jeremiah is in prison of preaching the word of God. Kings of Azra did not like the message that the weeping prophet was preaching. So he decided to shut him up by throwing him in prison. While he's in prison, God gives him a message that his people will be held in captive in Babylon for 70 years. He tells Jeremiah they would lose their land and not only lose their land, but they would lose their freedom for 70 years. This bothered Jeremiah. Jeremiah could not comprehend or understand what God was doing. And, and, he, and he was so bothered and complex by it that he began to doubt God. Do I have a witness? You, you know what he said. He said, I'm not going to mention his name anymore. He decided to turn in his preaching license only to find out that his preaching license was not on paper, but it was fire shut up in his book. Do I have a witness? He could not understand what God was doing. And, and brothers and sisters, let me pause parenthetically just to tell you that if you walk this walk long enough, there will be times you will not know what God is doing. Do I have a witness? That there are going to be some times when, when you can't trust his hand, but you have to learn how to trust his heart. There will be some times that God will leave you in the dark and will not disclose to you what his plans are. No, but tell you that he will ask you to build a boat when there is no rain in the forecast. Joshua will tell you that he will tell you to walk around the wall and not give you any C4 down right. Ezekiel will tell you that he will tell you to speak to some dry bones till the bones will come to life and come together. Peter will tell you, he'll tell you to get out of the boat and start walking without giving you a surfboard. Y'all gonna help me. But Hosea will tell you that he will ask you to marry a prostitute and take care of your own, not even your own children. He'll tell you to, to drop water pots in the water and you'll get out of line. He'll tell you to pray for those that despitefully use you, love your enemies. He'll tell you to forgive seven times 77. Y'all know him. He'll tell you to give 10% first, even though your life bill is due. Sometimes you got to just trust God. Do I have a witness? You, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to have faith to believe that God knows exactly what he's doing. And so he tells Jeremiah, if you have any questions, just call me. Tell me what you want. He said, Jeremiah, I got the answers for you. I got the explanation. The very thing, Jeremiah, that, that has you confused, the very thing, Jeremiah, that has you up at night, that's turning uh, up at night, walking the floor with midnight tears. The very thing that's making you lose sleep, that's making you pop pills. I need to tell you, your answer is on the other end of prayer. Do I have a witness? 
And somebody here needs to know that, that you're wondering what God is doing with the economy, what, what God is doing through this COVID-19. You're wondering what God is doing through our president. But I can tell you the answer is on the other end of prayer. God tells him, Jeremiah, if you call me, I'll ask. And Jeremiah, this is what I'm going to do for you. Here it is, Jeremiah. I'm going to show you great things. I'm going to show you mighty things, yeah. which you know not. That, that's the story in a nutshell. But there, are some, there are some heavenly hints that I want to share with you today, I think, that would be good for us. Do you want to hear it? About? If you want to hear it, just say, I want to hear it. Type in, I want to hear it. If you want to hear it. Today. Number one, here it is, very simple, here it is. Number one, God hears our prayer. Yes. He tells Jeremiah to call me. He says, Jeremiah, call me. It's right there in your text. He says, call to me. God hears our prayers. He says, call me. Don't it frustrate you when trying to reach someone and and it's important that they answer the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all have a witness <laughs> only to get a record. My Lord. What about when you call a business and, and, and they tell you to press one if you need this and press two if you need that and yeah. press three if you can't get this. It, it irks me to call a business and all I get is a but not with God. God encourages us to call him. He's expecting our call. Do I have a witness? Now, if if he wanted, if he wanted to, he could he could literally forward us over to his angels. Do I have a witness? He he yeah, he, he could forward us over. He he could do you like Walmart did me the other day. Call Walmart uh, to, to ask for the sporting goods. <laughs> and on the other end was, watch this, electronics. <laughs> no, I have a witness. And when the electronics picked up, I said, I'm looking for the sporting goods. And they sent me over to the automotive. And when the automotive picked up, I, I asked for the sporting goods. They, they sent me over to the hardware department. Do I have a witness? God, God could forward you over. To somebody else. Do I have a witness? Aren't you glad God didn't forward us over to another department? I, I mean, I mean, just, just imagine if you called heaven and, 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 and you called him and he said, to start a human race, call Adam. Yeah, they're gonna help me. To, 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 to win battles, press two for David. To, 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 to have a baby uh, when, 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 when you're old and feeble, press three for Abraham. When, when you want to rain, find out from heaven and press four to for Elijah. But when, when you want to open the Red Sea, press five to Moses. But God didn't say that. He, he said, you ain't got to call Elijah. You ain't got to call David. You, you, ain't, you ain't got to call Peter. You can call me. Can I get a witness? Aren't you glad that when you get down on your knees, you can talk, call directly to God? I'm, I'm talking about a one-on-one -on -one face line. Do I have a witness? Come on, come on, iPhone 4. You know what I'm saying. I'm talking about a fixed time. I'm, I'm talking about a one-on-one. -on -one. Come on, Zoom people. Come, come on, let's have people. You know what I'm saying. As soon as you call him, you ain't got to put in an access number. You can get him direct. Yes, Do I have a witness? And it does not matter about your soul. does not matter about the situation. does not matter about your subject. God said, call me. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? It's right there in the tent. He says, call me. The Bible said that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Do I have a witness? A woman, a woman asked her pastor once, should I pray for the big things or should I pray for the small things? The pastor replied, everything to God is small because nothing is too big for him. Do I have a witness? It may be big to you, but nothing is too big for God. Do I have a witness? And get this, when you talk to God, don't you tell God how big your problem is. You tell your problem how big your God is. God, nothing is too big 
Can, can I tell you? Can I tell you when you ought to call him anytime? Can, can I tell you where you ought to call him any place? Can, can I tell you what you can talk to him about anything? <laughs> can I get a witness? Call him. He announced. Go oh, have a witness. God hears our prayer. Secondly, God heeds our prayer. He said, call me. Yeah. Watch this. And I will answer. He didn't just say call me. But he said, call me. And I will answer. He didn't say I might answer. He didn't say I may answer. He didn't say I could answer. He said, I will answer. The only prayer that God does not answer is the prayer that's never prayed. God answers all of our prayer. Now, understand that sometimes the answer may not be in our faith. Sometimes it may not be the answer you want. But God will answer our prayer. Can I get a witness? Sometimes his answer is go. Sometimes his answer is slow. And sometimes his answer is no. Y'all ain't getting that. I said sometimes his answer is go. Sometimes his answer is slow. But sometimes his answer is no. Now, now, we, we really can't complain. Because he has told us more goals than no. <laughs> Do I have a witness? It's just that when God does not give us our goal, we complain. But when you really think about your life, and I don't have to preach about myself, I can even preach to you about it, that when you really look back over your life, God has given you more goals than no. Can I get a witness? Oh, oh yes, he, yes, he has. Oh yes, oh, yes, he has. He woke you up this morning. That was a goal. Woke you up in your right mind hours ago. Food on your table on yesterday, all week long, even during this economic crisis. That's a goal. Can I get a witness? You ain't walking around quarantine. That's a goal. Can I get a witness? Some of you still got essential jobs you can go to. That's a goal. And come and let me talk to you. Just the other day, a few of y'all got $1,200 in your account. That's a goal. Anybody here want to give God some praise for the goal? You know, have a witness. I, I know you don't have everything and you don't have all the money and you don't wear all the fancy clothes and you don't live on the fancy side of town. But how many can say thank God for the goals in my life? That when you look back over your life and you see where God has brought you from and you see what God is doing in your life, even during this pandemic crisis, how many can say, Lord, I thank God. If you don't say go, you're going to say slow. Right. And sometimes God is trying to slow us down. Do I have a witness? Sometimes, get this, we move too fast. Sometimes you ain't ready for the blessing. And then sometimes the blessing ain't ready for you. And I've learned to understand that God delays are not God denials. Let me say it again. I said God delays are not God's denial. So, sometimes waiting ain't all bad. Do I have a witness? I, I know it ain't all bad. Because David, David said, oh, just wait on him, I say. Just wait on him. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. Yeah, Isaiah said, if you wait on me, you'll renew your strength. That you'll mount up with wings as eagles and you'll run and not be worried. I, I thank God for my goals, but I also thank God for my slow. Do I have a witness? Not only if he'll say go, not only if he'll say slow, but he'll say no. See, we love to shout on the go. But we want to pout on the note. My Lord. Can I preach it here? I said, we'll shout on the go. But we'll pout on the note. But how many can thank God for the no's in your life? Do I have a witness? I, I remember when, whenever we wanted to do something uh, in the store or wanted to go somewhere, mama didn't agree. Mama wouldn't say no. Mama would say, uh-uh. Y'all -uh. going to help me preach this thing? And, and sometimes God, whenever we go to God about certain things, God don't say no. God say, uh-uh. I, I thank God for the uh-uhs in my life. Because there are some uh-uhs that gave me a better church. 
That's my uh uh-uh that gave me a better house. That's my uh uh-uh that gave me a better job. Can I get a witness? I say you ought to thank God for the uh uh-uh, uh because ain't no telling where you would be if God would have gave you what you have. You'd have lost your mind. You'd be somewhere in the hospital, somewhere with a misdemeanor, a felony on your record. I don't know about you today, but I thank God for the uh uh-uh. uh. Anybody you want to give God not for what you got, but anybody want to give God a few praises? For the nose, I tell you what, you ought to just type amen and say, Thank God for my nose. Oh, I wanted it so bad. I wanted it so bad, but God wouldn't let me have it. But now, when I look in hindsight, I thank God for Him telling me, Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Do I have a witness? God hears our prayer. God heeds our prayer. But then God finally, He honors our prayer. Thank you, Lord. He tells Jeremiah, Call me. I mm-hmm. And Jeremiah, I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. He says, I'll show you great and mighty things. I, I wanted to know what this great and mighty was, and, and, I, and I looked it up. Uh, th- this word mighty means fortress. It means God will show him things that are fenced in. All right. Do I have a witness? You, you know, you know when, when we grew up, whenever we wanted to see what somebody else was doing in the backyard, we would look through the cracks. <laughs> and, and the reason why I call it, we had to look in the cracks is because their fence was fenced yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness? And what I'm trying to suggest to you is that if you start praying, God will make people look through your cracks. What God will start doing, God will start showing you things that He won't show everybody else. I, I like to call it a sneak preview. And sometimes God will give you a sneak preview. A sneak preview is when when only He show you uh, the job you're applying for, but He'll show you the department you're gonna be working in. <laughs> a sneak preview is when you apply for the house, but He'll only show you the address. Now they're going to help me preach. A sneak preview is what? When you come to the doctor, but he'll show you I live in the doctor. Do I have a witness? God will show you things that he won't show everybody else. And here it is. Get this. When people see you smiling, when people see you got a joy in your heart, serving God and praising God, moving on anyway, people want to know how you making it. You can say, because God has showed me some things that he ain't showed you. And I want to talk to 10 people in here today, even 10 out there in Facebook land, that even in the midst of your situation, you ain't tripping, you ain't worried about what's going on, because you already know you got God's protection, you got God's provision, and you got God's presence, because God is showing you things that he ain't showing everybody else. Go and smile when you go to work. Wake up this morning with your mind on Jesus, because God will continue to show you that he ain't shown everybody else. I like the message translation. I'm almost done here. The message translation said, I tell you, marvelous and wondrous things. Watch what message says. The message translation says that you cannot figure out on your own. I, I think this is befitting for the text because Jeremiah is sitting in prison, confused, complex, and confounded. He's trying to figure out what God is really doing. He, he's trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm talking to a few people in here today, even in Facebook land, you're confused, you're complex, and you're confounded. You really don't know what God is doing. Then this thing, to some of us, may seem like it's going on too long. Because we really don't know what God is doing. This, 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 this coronavirus came out of nowhere and just disrupted all of our lives. And we cannot figure out what God is doing. People are losing their jobs. But people cannot even function the way they would normally function. And some of us are trying to figure out every day what God is doing. But the only way God will to reveal to you what's going on is that you got to call him up. Can I get a witness? You got to pray. You got to pray. Jeremiah needs to understand that God knows what he's doing. Watch 
because God, watch this, you ought to read this. After you log off, you ought to read it. You ought to read it. Because when you get down to the verse 4 and verse 5, uh, God says this, and it says in verse 4, and, and, and what the Lord says to him. He tells Jeremiah this. Here it is. He says, he says, I'm going to restore my people. He tells Jeremiah, eventually I'm going to heal the land. He tells Jeremiah, watch, eventually I'm going to put things back together again. He says, Jeremiah, Jerusalem one day will be the center of your joy. Can I get a witness? How soothing, how comforting that must have been for Jeremiah. Jeremiah now could turn off the lights and go on to bed because God has given him an answer to his prayer. Because God has assured Jeremiah that everything is going to be all right. That's what prayer will do for you. If you would just pray before you go to bed, you'll wake up in the morning and say everything going to be all right. Can I get a witness? All the doubt, all the uncertainty, all the wandering, all the anxiety went away from Jeremiah all because he called him up and told him what he wanted. That's why I like this song. Just a little talk with um, Jesus. Tell him, yes, about your trouble. He will hear him, hear your faintest cry. Come get a witness. Thank <laughs> you. 
coming now. If you're here today, you ought to go on and go to God in prayer. Talk to Him yourself, and He'll answer your prayer. Envelopes, our dollar for scholar envelopes, 
It's not about the church. But I want to us here. Give us a call and we'll be able to give you some that you can submit your financial contributions and designate it in the proper way. Next Sunday is fourth Sunday, which is our tribe Sunday. We're asking that you would do like you did the fourth Sunday in March, that you would give an envelope, put your financial contributions into the envelope, and please designate right who you are and write what tribe you represent. Amen. And we will make sure that we would get the tribe placement out to you via text message. If you did not get March placement, please give me a call. I'll be happy to forward it over to you that you may know how good your tribe did in the month of March. Let's not also forget about our, our senior saints, our elderly, those who may be alone. So the Penrise, the Lord's Penrise, is asking that we would pray for her husband. And there are other seniors who are maybe dealing with illness or may have a particular need. Please do not hesitate to call us and let us know what you need. We want to be there to help you. Let us also say a special prayer for Pastor D. and Belford, who lost his lovely wife for some 67 years of marriage on Thursday night. Please lift the Belford family up in our prayers. Thank you again for tuning in with us. We love you. We miss you. And sooner or later, we're going to get back together. God is going to end this. But it's not dictated on Trump time. It's dictated on God's time. Please be patient. Please be patient. We want you to be safe. We want you to be healthy. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Wherever you are, just stand up where you are. Just stand up where you are. Grab your children by the hand. Grab your husband by the hand. Grab your wife by the hand. That we may lift up God in prayer as we dismiss Remember, I always say that just because you can't get close to me, you can't be neighborly. Do what you can to be a blessing to someone who may need it. If you got a little extra money this week, thank God for it. Put it up. Be a good steward over your money. Don't go blow it because you don't ever know what tomorrow is going to bring. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your servants who are here. We thank you, Master, for your protection. And God, we trust in your divine plan. We pray now that you would give us a good week, a good safe week. That God, when we meet back here on Wednesday night at 6 p.m., that everything will be well. We lift up those who are sick. We pray for the nurses and the doctors who are on the front line. We pray for patience. Please give us patience. That we, not, that we may not move too fast. We look up our elected officials that seems like they're more concerned about the economy than us. We pray for them that you will give them a heart for people and not for money. We pray for our congregation as a whole our seniors, wherever they may be. Pray for our young people that they may stay safe during this summer. We pray for Dr. Dean Belford, his family as a whole. We ask that you would comfort his heart and his mind. We thank you, Master, for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung and bled on Calvary's hill. We pray that we can meet back here Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Thank you for those who have faithfully gave in their financial obligations to this church. Thank you for them caring about the church, caring about the business of the church. We ask that you bless their homes, open up the windows of heaven that it won't be room enough to receive. Thank you, Lord this opportunity to still come and worship and praise your name. Thank you for social media. That others may hear your word, hear your gospel, that it may bring hope and peace and love to them. We pray for leaders everywhere that are standing open in the name of Jesus, that you give them the strength to keep on practicing self-discipline and self-distancing. Now by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, 
sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest rule and abide in us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let us say amen. Type amen wherever you are. God bless you. God keep you. Please stay safe.